Welcome back friends, my name is Dan Vega and I'm a Spring Developer Advocate for VMware. I've been doing a lot of tutorials on Spring Security lately and one of those videos was on Spring Security using JSON Web Tokens or JWTs. So I got a lot of really great positive feedback on that video, but one of the suggestions that keeps coming up is, hey, I like it, but in the video you're using HTTP basic authentication and I wanna move away from that and I need to know how I can just send a username and a password in the request body to the token generator, authenticate against that and just get back the token. So that is exactly what we're gonna to do today. We are going to take the final code from the Spring Security JWT video. So I will leave a link to that video in the description or up here in the card. You may wanna go through that if you haven't watched that yet. And what we'll do is we'll take that code and then make the changes to that uh, that we need to, to go ahead and use a username and password authentication at the controller level. So I think this is gonna be a lot of fun and very helpful to a lot of people based on the feedback that I heard. Uh, so I hope you enjoy it. And what are we waiting for? Let's write some code. All right, so before we get started, I'm over here on GitHub. I wanna take a look at two of the repositories. The first is uh, just the Spring Security JWT. This is the first tutorial we went through. Again, you should go back and watch this tutorial if you haven't. I don't wanna start from scratch or this specific tutorial is gonna take like an hour long. So I wanna focus just on the username and password from the controller stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clone this repository and use this as a starting point to kind of continue on from there. At the end of it, we'll end up with a new repository. I didn't want to just create a branch. I have a new repository, and I think I've updated the uh, README since then. I did. Uh, this will be the repository that you can go ahead and look at the new updated code on. So those are the two repositories. They'll be in the description below, so go ahead and grab those. But as I said, if you want to follow along, clone this one, and we'll just start from here and talk about the changes that we need to make to allow us to do username and password authentication from the controller. All right, so here I am in the application. I'm going to just go ahead and run this just so we could see where we are right now. So when this runs, I want to open up Postman and just kind of show an example of this. I think I had this open before. So when we go to localhost 8080 and try to send a request, we're going to get a 401 unauthorized. And again, that's because we're using HTTP basic and we have not logged in yet. Uh, the way that this kind of authentication mechanism works is we need to pass our basic credentials, so our username and password that we set up. So I have this username and a password. If I go ahead and send this, I will get a token back. And then what we do is in an, on any subsequent request, we go ahead and pass that token as a bearer token along with the request. So when we do that, now we can go ahead and hit the endpoint and uh, get, you know, get a, a valid response back. So that's how it worked before. Let's go ahead and take a look at some code in here. So again, we just have this authentication controller and we have this token endpoint. So this token endpoint takes an authentication. So this is authentication. So this essentially is uh, who I'm logged in as. And the way that we do that is through HTTP basic. So we're sending in that authorization header that contains the HTTP basic uh, username and pass. And that's how we get authenticated. Again, one of the one of the requests I got was this is great, but I want to get rid of HTTP basic. I don't want to do that. I want to send the username and the password as part of the request body to this token endpoint. I want you to validate that that username and password is correct. And if it is, send back the token in one request. Now this could be up for debate. There are different kind of approaches to this. You might want to have a separate endpoint for logging in and a separate endpoint for token. I'm not going to get into that today. What I'm going to do is just kind of provide the response to that question. Uh, we can easily start up a conversation about that if you want. Go ahead and leave your comments uh, in the comments below. Uh, I'd love some feedback on your kind of approach to, to that particular scenario. But let's just take it at face value and go through this tutorial. So how are we going to do this? Well, the first place that we got to start is our security config. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do a couple of things. Uh, the first is I don't need this cores. It's not hurting anybody, but I'm just going to slim down some code today. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of HTTP basic, right? We're not using HTTP basic anymore. So now the question becomes, how are we going to authenticate? 
So one of the things that we're going to need is an authentication manager. So there is some, depending on who you ask, uh, if you go ahead and search for this, there are some different approaches to to get an instance of a th of an authentication manager. And, you know, I've talked to the Spring team and one thing that we should not be doing is getting this from the authentication configuration. So I'm going to show you this just in case that you've seen an example of this around. But there might be a way to say, all right, I want an authentication manager. Uh, we'll just call this authentication manager. And I know there's this authentication configuration going around. So if I have that, I can go ahead and authentication configuration got get authentication manager. So if we throw an error here, uh, this will work. I'm not saying it won't work. This will work, but this is not a recommended approach. Um, there are some things that could happen, uh, some collisions that could happen, if you will, by using this approach. What you want to do is actually create your own authentication manager. So if you look at authentication manager, what is an authentication manager? It is the process uh, a way to process an authentication request. So it attempts to authenticate the past authentication object, returning a fully populated authenticated, uh, authenticated object. So what we want to do is create our own. So don't do this. Let's create our own. And how can we do that? So the way that we're going to do that is we are going to, again, create a public authentication manager. Uh, let's go ahead and call this auth manager. And what we're going to take in here is a user details service. So user details service. And um, what, so what we're doing here is this is creating an in user memory for testing only. So again, we're using this not password. Um, we should use a, a real password encoder, but again, for sake of demo, this is okay. So I'm just going to change this. Uh, this also is an instance of user detail service. So now that we have a user's detail service, we'll get an instance of that here. We need the user um, detail service because we have a particular user that we're logging in with. Again, I've done other tutorials on different approaches to uh, whether it's a user detail service, whether you want to use the JDBC manager user details, you can use JPA to retrieve users from a database. All of those are, are different ways of doing that. But at the end of the day, we need a user or users that we can have in our application to authenticate against. So with that user detail service, what I want to do is I want to say, I want to create a new DAO uh, authentication provider. Um, so I'll create that and I'll assign that to auth provider. So we have an auth provider. Now what I can do is say auth provider dot set user detail service. So again, if we skip this step, we won't have any users. Even though we've kind of created this bean here, we're creating a new auth provider here. Um, and we need to be able to set our user detail service. Um, and then all we're going to do is return a new provider manager. And we're going to pass in that auth provider. So at the end of the day, this chunk of code will return to us an authentication manager. And this is what we need uh, back in our controller to make what we're trying to do possible. So um, we're starting to look good here. Again, uh, we have our user detail service. So this gives us our user. We have some, from the previous tutorial, we have some self-signed certs. In the final code that I showed you for this new tutorial, I've removed that and just used some code from the Spring Security samples to generate those certs on startup. So that's one less step you have to do. If you're interested in that, go ahead and take a look at the code. If you want more of a walkthrough of how that happens, let me know. Uh, but we, we kind of remove that. Um, and then we have kind of a simplified security here. We have, again, we are using OAuth2 resource server. So we're saying OAuth2 resource server configure. We're using JWT and we are not using HTTP basic anymore. So we remove that mechanism.
Um, and then we still have our encoder and our decoder. So our security config looks good. Now what we need to do is go over to our auth controller. All right, so we're here in our authentication controller. We have a method called token, which is a post mapping for the path token. So we're just gonna kind of make some changes here. The first thing that we're gonna need is we're gonna need an instance of that authentication manager that we created. So I'm gonna say private final authentication manager, authentication manager, and let's add a constructor parameter for that. So now we have what we need. Now what we're not gonna take in is an authentication object. We are basically going to take the username and the password as uh, part of the request body. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new model for something called a login request. I'm gonna create a new Java class. This will be called login request, and this can just be a record. So again, we're just gonna take in a string for username and a string for password, and that's all we really need here. So now what we can do is we can come back to our controller and we can say, uh, I wanna accept an argument of type, and we'll call that user login. So we are going to accept this as part of the request body. So I'll mark it with the at request body annotation. And again, I'm going to get rid of these logs just for now, and we can always just come back to this. So the first thing that we wanna do is we want to authenticate using that username and password. So the authentication manager is going to give us that ability using the authenticate method. So this takes in an authentication. Now we, we aren't authenticating using HTTP, HTTP basic anymore. What we wanna use is a new username and, oops, username, come on Dan, password authentication token. So this is going to take in the username and password. <clears throat> so I'm gonna say user login dot username and user login dot password. All right, so, so far so good. Now this is going to return something. Let's see what this returns. We want to go ahead and introduce a local variable and this is gonna return uh, an authentication. So similar to what we had before already. So now what I can do is I can just return this and that is going to, whoops, authenticate. Let's just call this authentication. And now we can pass that authentication into our generate token method. And the generate token method takes that so that I can use it and get the name for the subject here. So this, should be all we need. Let's just double check. We are calling uh, authentication manager dot authenticate. We are passing in a new username password authentication token with the username and password. Okay, so uh, I think that is good. Let's see, go ahead and save that. And that should be all we need. Let's go ahead and rerun this application. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna test going to the home controller. Uh, so the home controller, <clears throat> everything it, <clears throat> so we're gonna test going to the home controller. You can see the uh, root mapping uh, will return the principles, authenticated principles name. If we look at our security config again, uh, we'll know that everything is request, any request is, needs to be authenticated. The only time you don't need to be authenticated is when you're hitting that token endpoint. So I'm gonna go back to Postman, and what I'll do here is I'm gonna remove this token. And so I'm saying, uh, go ahead and, and try to hit localhost 8080, and that is gonna return a 401 unauthorized. And now what I wanna do is instead of passing basic, so I'm gonna say no auth, what I wanna do is in the request body, I'm going to pass the username and password. Uh, so let's just go ahead and pass something that doesn't work. Uh, let's just say pass. And let's go ahead and try to send this to token. And we get a 401 authorized. So now if we go ahead and say um, username and password, we now get our token back, 
So we can now, again, uh, coming over here, <clears throat> trying to hit localhost 8080 without a token is not going to work, but we're going to pass that bear token in. We just got back, and we can now hit our endpoint. So again, just a, a small change from the previous tutorial, but it was one that uh, I got a lot of requests for. And I, again, the biggest highlight here is how you get the authentication manager. There's a lot of tutorials going around saying to get it from the authentication configuration. And I've been advised by the Spring team that we, or Spring security team that we don't wanna do that. And the better approach here is to go ahead and create an authentication manager of your own. And I know I sound like a broken record, but uh, the Spring security team is just so helpful. I just want to give a huge shout out to Daniel Garnier Moreau. I hope I'm saying that right. Daniel has been a big help with putting me this particular demo together, and I really appreciate his help here. So I think that's where we'll leave this. Again, if you go ahead and look at the final code, there's a little bit different. There, there's a little bit a few changes that we didn't go through today. Um, I just removed the, the certs, and I'm going to, since we're self-signing them anyway, uh, I go ahead and just generate those on startup. So that could kind of simplify some code. But all in all, I like where these uh, tutorials are going. If you have a specific need that you're trying to figure out, uh, go ahead and leave me a comment and we'll see if we can't get to that. Uh, but again, expect some more spring security tutorials in the near future. We have a lot of things that we can cover. Uh, so I'm just trying to go through and cover all those scenarios. But hey, if this particular video is something that you were looking for and you found some value in this, do me a big favor, friends. Leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, happy coding.